Hello, today we're going to talk about two more phylums. The phylum Echinodermata, which is the starfish, sea urchin, sea cucumbers, feather stars, sand dollars, and the mollusks, which are the clams and so forth, snails. Echinoderms are called spiny skin animals. There's about 5,000 different species and they are all marine. Um, they are very advanced as far as invertebrates go. Um, they are either very, very slow moving or they are sessile or sedentary animals. They do have radial symmetry, okay, and they are examples of starfish, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, sand dollars, feather star. Uh, they have the body cavity, which is called coelom. Again, they have the one-way digestive tract, meaning they have a mouth and an anus. Radial symmetry is that you can pass a point, a line through any point in any direction. They have those three tissue layers. And they do have two feet. Two feet are very important in locomotion, feeding, and gas exchange. Now, with the radial symmetry, we call it pentamerous radial symmetry because it can be divided into five equal parts from a central axis. Okay? Um, as a larva, the, their symmetry is bilateral. Okay? Now, we do have what's called an endoskeleton, an internal skeleton that's going to protect and support the organism's soft tissues. It's also going to provide a place to which muscles can attach. And it is made up of calcium compounds that form plates. So it's a very internal framework and support system. Okay. Um, there is a nerve ring, which is centrally located, okay, around the mouth with radiating nerves. There is no head, no brain. Okay. Um, these nerves that radiate into other parts of the body allows the starfish or the sea star to respond, respond excuse me, to stimuli coming from any direction. We will be dissecting the starfish, and you will be noticing all the different parts. You do have your spines, because they're spiny skin with the endoskeleton. The two feet we're going to talk about with the water vascular system. We have a two-part stomach. There's the anus. Okay. Um, echinoderms can reproduce asexually or sexually. Asexually is through regeneration, and sexually is external fertilization. Gametes are going to be released into the water and fertilized externally. And we'll watch all these videos when we come to class. So we're going to be dissecting the starfish or the sea star. So this is class Asteroidea. All right, there are five arms that project from the central disc. Um, they are primarily bottom dwellers, and they move using their two feet, which are located on the lower side of their rays. All right, they are carnivorous, okay? They will push their stomachs outside their body to surround a food organism. Um, the digestive tract will secrete juices that begin digesting the soft body of the mollusks or the clam within its shell. Now, they don't have an excretory system, so waste will diffuse from their cells into the coelomic fluid, and then they will go out the body through the two feet. The water vascular system is so important, okay? This is going to allow the echinoderms to catch food, move, and for gas exchange. Pretty much, it's a network of hydraulic canals that branch into the two feet. So, we start off with water being drawn in through a central disc. That will pass through a series of canals that will run along each arm. And it will go into the bulbs of the tube feet. Okay? Now, water um, is going to be forced into the tube feet. That's going to cause the bulb to contract, creating a suction. So, the tube feet actually lengthen. When the bulbs relax, water gets pushed back through the canals, the two feet shortens, and it's going to relax the suction. This can pull a force of 20 kilograms. So the two feet are so important in locomotion, feeding, and gas exchange. This is showing you the feeding. Okay. Now we're going to be talking about mollusks. Um, mollusks, there's about 50,000 to 100,000 known species. Um, examples would be snails, slugs, oysters, clams, octopus, squid. Um, they are marine. Um, they can live on land. They can inhabit fresh water. 
they do have a soft body enclosed by a shell or shells, and most are shells. Um, the shell is made of calcium carbonate, and it's used as protection against predators and physical damage, like the pounding waves. Um, it also is used to prevent mollusks from drying out in periods of high tide. Now, squids and octopuses have reduced their shells that have been internalized, um, or they've lost them completely. Okay? Now, the mother of pearl look that you get on the shell is called a knacker. And what that is, is that consists of thin sheets of calcium carbonate separated by protein, um, and that kind of spreads across the entire shell. Okay? This is showing you the general body plan. They are bilateral symmetry. They do have their three tissue layers. They have the body cavity or the coelom. And they have um, a well-developed head, except the clam, okay, and oysters. So they have eyes, um, they have tentacles, they have radula, okay? So a radula is the feeding device. It's like a strap-like, rasping, ribbon-like organ um, that's only found in mollusks. And it muscular structure it has these hard tooth projections um, kind of like a row of curved teeth that's made up of chitin and that's going to allow the mollusk to scrape food from different surfaces like algae off of rocks octopus use the radula to tear the flesh from its prey um, the radula of a tropical snail is composed of barbed teeth that are filled with neurotoxins that are capable of killing a human um, and the snail can detach each tooth from the radula, inject it like a harpoon into the prey. Now, it has a muscular foot. Um, the muscular foot is going to allow the moss to move along the ocean floor, the freshwater floor, or land. <coughs> Excuse me. Tentacles are modified feet um, in squid and octopus. And then there are glands on the bottom of the foot that's going to help secrete mucus to help it move. Now, respiration is occurring now. So, for aquatic species, we have gills. This is going to allow for an exchange of gases with the water environment. And you will see it's a very thinly, highly folded tissue area that does have a lot of surface area. The gills have very many uh, microscopic blood vessels, okay, which is going to allow oxygen to be absorbed from the water and release carbon dioxide. Again, they have that whole one-way digestive tract. There's a mouth and an anus. The visceral mass, okay, contains digestive, reproductive, excretory, and circulatory organs. It really contains the organs of the mollusks, and it is located above the foot. A mantle is a heavily folded tissue around the visceral mass, and it creates a cavity where the gills are located. It will secrete calcium carbonate, which will form the shell. Okay, and the mantle cavity is going to house the gills, the anus, and excretory pores. And it will be a good site for respiratory gas exchange. And it also allows for water to filter out the food particles. Open circulatory system means that blood is not confined to vessels after leaving the heart. Okay, and they actually have a, cha a two-chambered heart. Okay, so we're going to talk about a couple of different classes. Class Gastropoda um, is the largest mollusca group. These are the snails and the slugs, and there's about 40,000 different species. Um, most are uh, marine, but they can be in freshwater and they could be on land. Um, as far as the um, gastropods goes, this is called stomach foot. They are going to eat plants, meat, dead organisms. Okay, terrestrial gastropods. Um, are the snails um, and slugs that live on land. Okay, they don't have gills. Instead, they have a simple lung. And a simple lung is an organ for gas exchange in air-breathing animals. Um, it's a very narrow opening to the outside, uh, which is good because that will prevent air from drying out of the lung tissue. So gases will diffuse between the air and the blood. Okay, and again, um, they have the radula to help, to help um, scrape the food. Um, they can bore holes in shells of other mollusks to tear apart animal tissue and so forth. So the next one is class Pelsipoda. These are the bivalves. 
the oysters, clams, and mussels. Um, and pretty much it means two shells, mollusks with two shells or valves. Okay. Now they don't have a radula. They do have gills that are used for um, respiration and feeding. Um, some of them don't move as an adult. They are sessile. Okay. They do have um, separate sexes. They do strain their food out from the gills. Um, it will pass through the esophagus, stomach, intestines. There are separate sexes. Um, and water is going to flow into the mantle cavity through an incurrent siphon. It's going to pass over the gills, and then it's going to enter the mantle cavity through the excurrent siphon. And just a fun fact, a giant razor clam was found in Alaska and weighed 72 pounds. The largest natural pearl is 14 pounds. We will be dissecting the clam, so you'll get to see all these different parts. All right, the last class we're going to talk about is the cephalopods. This is the most highly specialized of the mollusks, and it means head foot. So this is the squids and the octopuses. Um, they are built for speed. Um, they could be 75 centimeters to 17 meters long. They are very intelligent. They have a very large brain. Um, they are capable of learning behavior and adapting their actions to locate and find prey. Okay, they do have eyes, um, which is very similar to the vertebrate eyes. They are carnivorous. Um, they use their beak-like jaws and a radula to crush or rip prey apart. They can inject poison to immobilize their victim. Their foot has evolved into the long ar arms that project from the head. Um, they're like tentacles, and the mouth is kind of in the center of that tentacle. They do have the closed circulatory system, again, because they have to be um, efficient to be moving rapidly. Again, this is the only mollusk that does have a closed circulatory system. And they are the most active movers of all mollusks. So if you guys have any questions, see me tomorrow in class. Thanks.